Solarbreak Green Greg here, and today I'm going to talk about going solar. Should you do a solar loan, cash, lease, or PPA? Caution, this mistake can drain your wallet tens of thousands of dollars. This is no exaggeration. Okay, so let's look at these finance types. Cash has the highest upfront payment. Loan, loan is uh, usually zero dollars down and it's lower than utility and you can get terms anywhere from 10 to 25 years you have a choice as a homeowner a lease has the lowest monthly payment but you're locked in for 25 years a power purchase agreement also is lower versus utility but again you're locked in it for 25 years and there's a payment escalator where the payment goes up by the way a power purchase agreement is where you're paying per kilowatt hour, the same way your utility charges you, but you're paying a lower rate, but you're under contract for 25 years. Okay, so let's look at a chart to better understand this. So for this example, I'm using 25 years of bills, and this is all theoretical, okay? I'm using 25 years because solar panels are warranted for 25 years, okay? So in this case, in red circle here, we have $200 a month for the utility company, right? And that keeps going up and up and up. A solar lease, 110 per month, right? And this also goes up, all right? And by the way, sometimes a solar lease can actually be more than utility if the lease escalation, the increase rate, is more than what the utility is increasing, okay? And a power purchase agreement is very similar lease, so I left that line off here because this chart's getting too busy. And then a solar loan is 180 a month, okay? And you notice here for solar loan, it's a straight line across. The payment doesn't go up. And whenever the loan is paid off, you basically get electric for free, okay? This does include reinvesting the tax credit, okay? And lastly, we have cash. Let's say if you spend 30,000 cash, you get a $9,000 tax credit, 30%, that's $21,000. And uh, so it's a one-time outlay. Um, so it's like buying your electric in bulk for the next 25 years. And there you only have a payment of $25 here in this green circle, um, which is the minimum utility fee uh, that's charged here in Florida. It might be different in your state. Let me go on to explain a bit more detail. So here in light green, we have penalty for early termination. For cash, obviously there's no penalty. You own the system. Loan, there's no penalty. The way the loan works, it's a simple interest loan, just like a car loan, you get paid off any time. A lease or a power purchase agreement, both of these you will need to buy out the agreement. And that usually means you have to prepay uh, how many months and years there are left to the contract, okay? So this can get pretty expensive if you have to buy out the lease because, hey, you're selling the home or you're transferred to somebody else with, that wants to take a mortgage. Who gets the 30% tax credit and incentives? If it's cash or loan, it's the homeowner. If it's a lease or power purchase agreement, it's the lease company that gets that tax credit. So right off the bat, they keep 30%. Total monthly payments. So for cash, obviously the lowest loan is the second lowest and the lease and power purchase agreement are higher. Let me show you that on the chart again. So here in the rectangle boxes, I have the total payments over 25 years. Now these numbers are all theoretical. For the utility, I included a 4% inflation rate. And you'll see here in this rectangle box here in the top right in red, I have $100,000. So this $200 electric bill ended up being a total of $100,000 over 25 years with 4% inflation, okay? So let's look at the solar lease. Well, the solar lease, yeah, it started out at 110, but over 25 years, this is $72,000, okay? And it keeps increasing. A power purchase agreement is very similar to this, but you're paying per kilowatt hour, but also increases. Let's look at the solar loan. The solar loan, again, 180 per month. The total is 54,000 over 25 years. So a lot less than the lease or the utility, okay, over 25 years. K 
cash total payments here is $21,000. Okay. So obviously, you know, cash is going to be the best option if you have cash. Um, you'll save the most money. You'll get the best rate over 25 years. Obviously, you're taking money that you could invest in the stock market or somewhere else. But what we're seeing here, at least in Florida, is the return on investment is somewhere between 12 to 15 percent a year ROI. And that's actually a lot better than what you can consistently get in most investments. OK, in California, by the way, or some other states, this rate might even be higher. It all depends on electric rates and some other factors, of course. But if you don't have cash, you know, the loan is a great option. And even, by the way, if the loan payment ends up being a little bit more than utility initially, because of this of this inflation rate, the loan will still be lower over time. OK. And by the way, I used a 4% inflation rate, which is very modest. I mean, we're seeing if we're seeing electric rates go up 15, 20 percent, you know, in one or two years. So I mean, very, very modest here in my assessment. OK, which option has the highest return on investment? Cash. You save the most money with cash. The loan can still save you about, you know, in our example, 46000 so still pretty good. A lease and power purchase agreement, you know, those are question marks. And the worry is, is what if you're not there for the full 25 years and you got to prepay all those payments? That's going to be very costly. You could actually end up paying more to the lease company than you would the utility. And I've got a story about this I'll share later. Who owns a solar? Well, if it's cash or a loan, the homeowner owns it. If it's a lease or PPA, the leasing company owns it. If I sell the home with solar, the way it works is if you have cash, simple. The buyer buys the home, including the solar, and solar is part of the home value. And by the way, solar does increase the home value, by the way. Loan, with a loan, uh, the loan is paid off with the proceeds of the sale. Just like if you uh, sold a home with a home equity line, same thing. You paid off with the proceeds. Again, the buyer owns a home and the solar together, and it increases your home value. What if it's a lease? If it's a lease or a power purchase agreement, you have to convince the buyer to take over those payments. Or you're going to have to prepay those payments however remaining years there are left. And I got a story about this, so stay tuned. <laughs> this is where it can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. What's the effect on home value? Well, if it's a cash or a loan, because you own the equipment, Zillow, by the way, says nationwide about a 4% increase in home value. As far as a lease or power purchase agreement, it can often have a negative value. Why? Because again, you might have to pay off those uh, payments, how many months or and years are left on a lease or power purchase agreement. And often the home buyer doesn't want to take over your liability. Yeah, they just don't want to get involved. And sometimes you may be able to convince the home, buy home buyer to take over the lease or PPA, but if they do take it over, they're going to ask for a discount on the house. They're going to ask for a better price because they're taking over your liability. And maybe even they're like, well, geez, if I could buy a solar system now and I can get that 30% tax credit. So why do I want to take over your lease? See, that's a problem. Or the system is old. So yeah, it's a real negative with a power purchase agreement or release. If you do cash or loan, by the way, Zillow says that it's a positive 4.1% increase in average value. Uh, it's across the nation. Um, they do have breakdowns for different states, by the way. A lease or power purchase agreement is often a negative value because, again, they don't want to take over the lease or power purchase agreement, and you'll be end up having to try to buy out those agreements. A couple customer stories, and I found these on Reddit, so unbiased from somebody else, okay? Uh, but this home buyer was trying to buy a home and says, oh, the seller surprised me with a solar panel lease. So they weren't being up front that there was a solar panel lease to begin with. She 
as I have online here in red, I was given the Solar City contracts and learned that they were paying way more than they were saving. These panels were also very old with about 10 years left on a 25 year lease. So it's an old system and this, this becomes a problem because does somebody want to take over 10 years on a system that's very old, that's probably going to have problems, um, that there's better technology on, you know, 15 years ago, it probably was a great system, but not anymore. I then informed the seller they needed to buy out the lease and remove the panels. I also added that they would have to credit me for any damage done to the roof. Again, this is another thing that's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, to remove a solar system is actually very labor intensive and uh, usually there's mounts mounted to the roof. So those mounts would have to be removed and either shingles replaced or whatnot to get the roof back to original condition. Um, amazingly, by the way, it says here they agreed to everything and signed the addendum. The seller was probably so desperate to sell this home and I'm sure they tried to sell the home to other buyers, but because it had a solar panel lease, it probably turned people off. And so the agent probably wasn't being upfront about the fact that it's a solar panel lease and was kind of hoping that that could be settled, you know, before they signed the final agreement, which I think is, you know, not ethical to do. Uh, but that's probably what happened, you know, unfortunately. And, you know, the seller, I mean, they, they got nailed for thousands of dollars. I have to wonder after them buying out 10 years of a lease, whether over those 15 year lease periods, they did lease solar, whether it really saved them enough money or if they end up losing money in that solar contract. And this, this is the type of thing that gives solar a bad name. So let's look at another, another deal. Okay, and this is another homeowner. Uh, they purchased a house with an existing solar lease agreement and they just got hit with a $2,200 electric bill. Now, I don't know all the details here, but looking at her bill, what it looks like is um, they had a lease, I think, and they probably used more electric than was in the lease. And so now they got hit with a big, uh, big electric bill. Um, and I don't know why they take two years to catch up and let the customer know about it. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, but again, you know, this is just, you know, sad. It's outrageous. I mean, you know, this is the thing that gives solar a bad name. Now, I'm not here to knock Tesla, but it's things like this that give solar a bad name. So I don't know what's going on here, but something better should have been handled with this. Why does my solar panel lease prohibit the heating of swimming pools? Is this common? Again, this, this, is, this is the problem with the lease. It's like you have a landlord in your roof. You can't even do what the hell you want to do. So, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly, but I'm kind of guessing maybe that the lease is based on a certain amount of electric usage and they don't want the homeowner to um, use more electric. I'm kind of guessing. I don't know. But this, this is ridiculous. And again, you know... It's why I don't recommend leases. Okay, so what about maintenance? Well, if it's cash, it's, you'll usually get a high quality system. It may need a few repairs over 25 years. Hey, you know, everything in your house is gonna need some repairs over time. But what I find is it's not very significant usually. It's usually a minor repair or sometimes a repair that's covered by the factory for the equipment. And usually it's a few hundred dollars each time. So you might have two or three of those over time. It's not a big deal. Okay. Uh, the same thing with a, a loan. Now a lease or power purchase agreement, the leasing company handles the repairs. Okay. Um, now there's been some complaints though, where, Hey, the solar system is not working. They contact the lease company and they're not responding right away. So what happens is, Customers are paying for both the lease and paying the electric company because the solar is not producing. So this has happened. And again, this is the type of thing that gives solar a bad name. Um, it's unfortunate, but you know, I think, I think they just prioritize money first and let's face it, you know, you're, if you're paying the monthly, 
they're not losing any money, but you're losing money paying the utility. It, it's it's just shameful, but unfortunately, this does happen. Can the homeowner select the equipment and add a battery, EV, more solar, etc.? If it's cash or loan, yes, you can do that, no problem. If it's a lease or PPA, no, because the equipment belongs to the leasing company. And now you'll have to try to work something out with the lease company and sign a new contract. Again, th this is the problems. You just don't have flexibility at the lease or PPA. So one of the problems too is that the lease company will pick the cheapest darn equipment they could put on your rooftop. Why? Because they want to increase their profits. Okay. Rather than pick the best thing that's going to be best for you as a homeowner. So for instance, this top picture here shows a mounting where they just put some roof cement down and they drilled a lag bolt direct through the shingles. This will eventually leak over the years as the roof expands and contracts day after day, year after year, and you'll have a leak on your hands. And then you'll have to try to get the leasing company to come out and try to fix that. And you, you hope they come out soon so they don't cause too much roof damage. And let's face it, roof damage, it could be thousands of dollars. It caused mold, you know, do damage to ceilings, etc. Now this bottom picture is a professional solar mount. Now these solar mounts, by the way, they can cost a few thousand dollars on a given solar system. And chances are if you bought your equipment, the contractor would, would give you a proper mount that has a good warranty. This has a 20 year warranty on it, this bottom mount. Okay, so that's the difference between picking your own equipment. The other thing is when you pick your own equipment, you could pick either like Solar Edge or Enphase is another company that does the inverters and monitoring. I'm going to show you Solar Edge here. With Solar Edge, you have this really nice app that shows you how much you're producing, how much is being consumed in the home, how much is being fed to a battery if you got a battery, how much is going to charge in the EV. This is a premium system. But you only get that if you actually buy a system, not lease it or PPA, okay? And so the other advantage of this system too is it has individual panel monitoring. So if some panels are shaded or some panels are not working, use a homeowner on your phone app or desktop app can look at the system. And as you can see here in this corner here, we have these two panels that are black. That's because there's a tree shading the solar panels. This lets a homeowner know that maybe they need to trim some branches if they like to, okay? But at least they have that peace of mind, everything's working, and they can also tell what it's producing monthly, daily, etc. cetera. So, so I hope you found this video helpful. Solar Break Green Greg here, and on this channel we cover home solar PV, solar pool heating, and energy efficiency. And I do it all without any sales talk. You know, I've been in the solar industry now for 16 years, so I know all the insider secrets, stuff that nobody else will tell you tips and tricks, but I'm also a homeowner just like you, and I know how it is. You're just trying to get some information or maybe do some light troubleshooting. You don't want sales talk, right? If that's you, you just want information, hey, you're in the right spot. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. Oh, and by the way, in the comments, let me know where you're from. It's always fun to know where people are from, how far my voice is reaching to help out people with solar. And if you have an idea for a future topic you'd like me to cover, feel free to pop that in the comments as well. Thank you so much and have a great sunny day. Bye-bye for now.